Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. We've obviously got the huge Man City away game coming up this Sunday, so we thought we'd do another edition of a view from the other side where we find out what fans from the opposition think. Today we've got Alex from Blue Moon Rising with us. Alex, how are you, mate? Hi, I'm very well, Barnaby. How are you? Very well, of course. I remember well when we beat you at home 4-1 and you had to do uh, a little bit of a disastrous... Thing. Tell us, remind us what you had to do as, as Spurs beat Man City that <laughs> day. Let me read out my own punishment, part of me. That's very cruel of you. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. I recall, you had me dressed up in uh, head to toe in ladies' Spurs gear. Uh, wow. It was a dark day to be a blue. It was, it was the, the most opposite thing for, to a dark day I can think of, to be honest, mate. But uh, obviously things have changed. I'd say that was a big surprise for us now. And then this week with the, the big match coming up at the Etihad, the press seemed to be rolling, trying to, trying to make the script happen that Spurs are going to turn you over. I'm not so sure. Let's start with uh, City's season so far since then. How do you kind of feel? How do you guys feel it's gone? And where do you feel like you're at at the moment? I think it's real mixed bag this year for us. Uh, we started so strongly in the league, winning five out of five. Um, Tottenham Hotspur, as you mentioned, that we'll remember very well, did put a stop to that. And our away form after White Hart Lane diminished so far. Mm. Um, and we do need to improve on that. Top six, we've not beaten a top six side in the league this season, which is really, really alarming. Typically at home, we do all right with Tottenham. Uh, we do uh, tend to do all right there. And hopefully we'll get three points. That might just turn the wheels onto our season. It's a massive fixture for us. We are six points behind Leicester. If we lose on Valentine's Day, we're four points behind Tottenham, which I think is when we're starting to say we're not favourites for the league anymore. So really important that we get three points this weekend. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You mentioned um, the wheels kind of coming off after we beat you at home. Obviously, there are, there are more reasons than just uh, away form. Injuries have really struck you this season, haven't they? And obviously, you've been without your captain, which I think is a huge loss. Uh, obviously now De Bruyne's injured as well. There are rumours of Silva having picked up a knock as well. Let us know, um, you know, from up in Manchester, who's going to play and who's not. I mean, it's it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Like you say, Silva, no one really knows. Uh, to be honest, he's only just sort of come back from injury in 2016 and he's not looked... 100% the David Silver that can really take teams apart. Um, so who who will play? We're not sure. Company's definitely out. De Bruyne's definitely out. Navas is looking doubtful. Um, and this is probably for Spurs with the best time to play City. Our form's not really been what it can be and we're injuries all over the park. Um, we, we've even resorted to playing Burson Selina at the weekend who's one of our younger prospects uh, who yeah. looks really promising. It's great to see him get some first team football but he's not the sort of player that at this stage of his career we want to be relying on. Yeah. Kelechi and Acho I'd expect to see get some game time up front with Aguero uh, possibly starting out on the wing with Sterling out on the right. Um, so again, lots of young players coming through for City but not the 100% squ uh, strongest squad that maybe we're hoping for. Yeah, I have to say it feels a bit too, I mean I'm a, you know, obviously desperate for Spurs to win and so so proud of how we're doing this season but I do remember very specifically around this time last season we actually went to Old Trafford and a similar thing was happening in the week up to the game everyone was saying uh, all the press and the pundits saying Spurs are actually better than Man United I think they're going to go there and turn them over and United it's we didn't really turn up and we lost 3-0 so my big worry for for Sunday is whether the occasion might um, you know and our lack of experience of these big games might uh, get the better of us. However, what I will also say is that uh, in games where we've been playing teams who've come at us rather than set uh, 11 men behind the ball, it really suits us a lot more. So I do think it could well be a, a really open game. I just wonder, um, in terms of obviously having announced Pep as, as your manager for next season a couple of weeks ago, uh, since then, I think you, you beat Sunderland 1-0, but it was, it was tight, wasn't it? They probably deserved a draw. And then obviously Leicester last week. Do you feel, I know this is the, a, a very asked question of City fans, but do you feel like it could make a difference to the end of your season? And, and you know, is Pellegrini a dead man walking, etc., etc.? I think dead man walking's a bit strong. Um, he certainly, certainly will be if he joins Chelsea. Um, yeah. But I think it's, it's one of these that the players on the pitch who walk out onto the game, as soon as the whistle goes, footballers want to win the match in front of them. Um, how it you know, changes the atmosphere on the training ground, that might be a little bit different. But Joe Hart came out in the papers this week and said that he loves playing for Pellegrini, he enjoys it. Fernandinho has a very good relationship. A lot of the key players across the pitch like playing for him. I think if anything, it motivates them that little bit more to win something in this final season, to go out and win an FA Cup or win the league for Pellegrini, give them that golden goodbye and earn their place in Pep Guardiola's team because it does look like there are going to be changes. There are individual circumstances. Yaya Torre's motivation for the squad over the last season, the year before, has diminished. And watching him play at the weekend against Leicester, 
if you ever see a footballer who's not interested, it was embodied by Yaya Toure. Yeah. Uh, and personally, if it was down to me, I wouldn't start him against Tottenham because his commitment definitely looks like it's waned. And I'm not sure he's too bothered about playing for Pellegrini anymore and certainly not interested in playing for Guardiola. Um, whether Pellegrini will start Yaya Toure or have it between his thighs to, to bench him, I'm not so sure. Will it affect our season? I hope not. We've got to be wary of it. I don't think it is at present, but if the results do start to diminish, it all could fall away and crumble, and you might start seeing Tottenham Hotspur become the favourites of the league because City throw away our chance. And you're still not. You still don't think Leicester are going to are going to do it. Um, the difference is is that Leicester City. I, I, I'm really excited for Leicester. I think it's fantastic for the league. Yeah. Um, and I would, if we're not going to win it, I prefer Leicester to win it over yourselves, mm. just because of the fairy tale. Uh, that said. They are still two injuries away from it all falling to pieces. Whereas Tottenham have got a little bit more of a squad than you've had. Um, I've always said over the last four or five years that Tottenham Hotspur have always had 11, 11 players that could win the league, but just not a squad. Whereas this season, the players that aren't performing, players like, dare I say, Ericsson hasn't been at 100% what he can be over the course of the season. You've got players like him who are struggling to get in the team. He's a top quality player. And it's a Tottenham Hotspur side this year that actually, maybe we need to take a little bit more seriously than we have done in the past. Well, let's see if you do on uh, on Sunday. Now, obviously, we mentioned a little bit before the four-one at home. What do you think has has changed, you know, since that match? Uh, that, or what will you guys learn from that uh, for this home game against us uh, to make sure that doesn't happen again? Uh, I think. Where it went wrong is that we tried to dominate the game, and we did for 20 minutes, uh, and you kind of sat back and let us absorb the possession. Um, and we underestimated Tottenham first time around at White Hart Lane. At the end of the day, you're, you're, you're at least a top six club playing at home, and we can't afford to do that. I think what we suffered from was that we were missing company for the first time, uh, and we were missing Joe Hart yeah. and that weird partnership of Caballero and Net. Otamendi and I think was it Otamendi and Di Michaelis played that day, uh, and it just fell to pieces. And it's Otamendi and Di Michaelis have got a little bit stronger together. They looked wicked against Sunderland. But again, at Leicester, it fell apart. And I'm just hoping it depends which of those two turn up. Do we get the world-class Otamendi and the world-class Demichelis? Or do we get past it Demichelis and uh, difficult to communicate Otamendi? So it's just, I think, picking the right players and the right attitude and we can do it. And we should be able to, you know, we, we I do think the 11 we'll put out will be the stronger 11. And if we play our game right, we could win it 2-0 and put it to bed and really maybe damage Spurs' morale and maybe affect your season a little bit more. But... Equally, I can see it getting wrong and hopefully we won't see a repeat of Leicester, which is definitely on the cards. OK, so you mentioned a little bit before about um, you know, Spurs having a deeper squad and uh, an example using Ericsson of how even though he hasn't had his best season, we're still doing well. Just wondered in terms of uh, from an outsider looking in, you know, who's really impressed you for Spurs this season? Uh, who would you like maybe if you could have one of our players in your team? And, and do you think uh, top four is a shoe in for us now or a few bad results and could Man United pip us to that? Well, I think Tottenham Hotspur are having a really interesting season. You're doing this really, really annoying thing of developing loads of young English players and playing really attractive football, uh, which makes you very hard to dislike this year. Uh, I think someone like Dele Alli, you've got to mention, is one of the you know, he's one of the top young English prospects. Um, and to the point where I've just had a conversation with Paul from Blooming Rising TV. Last season, if you just said Dele Alli of Mil Milton Keynes would be probably preferred to Yaya Toure. Mm. You'd have been laughed out the joint. And yet this season, he's been on top of and Yaya hasn't. It's a player that's really exciting. As an England fan, I'm looking at Eric Dyer and Deli Ali as potential for the, the Euros. Maybe not to start every game, but for long-term England future, looking really promising. Tottenham in the top four, I think it's not guaranteed, but it's looking very likely to the point that if Tottenham don't finish in the top four, it might be a little bit embarrassing in the sense that it's... Uh, you know, you look the favourites and possibly for the league now. Mm. Uh, United, I don't think their their poor form will last too long. They're going to come back on your heels. Arsenal looks strong. I'd like to think we're going to be in there. And there's, of course, Leicester. So it's going to be a really, really interesting one to the finish. This Sunday is a massive fixture for the top four and the title race. Uh, but Tottenham Hotspur, I think, are the ones to watch and possibly the ones to beat at the minute. Oh, very exciting, very exciting. OK, well, let's just end it then with your predictions for Sunday. Obviously, you know, are you going to go with your heart and your head, or is your head telling you it might be more difficult than you want it to be? Uh, no, I think it's going yeah, to be difficult. I'm going to go slightly optimistic when I say 2-1, and my prediction is that City score first, make it really difficult for ourselves, look really strong, and we'll have a nice Sergio Aguero winner in the 80th minute. OK, so you're going 2-1. I'm going to go one all, I think. This is my realistic Tottenham head. Uh, we haven't, you know, you were saying you haven't beaten a top six team. I think we haven't lost to a team... Uh, apart, since Man United on the opening day we lost away when we just played in the Munich pre-season tournament three days before and we looked a bit tired the only other games we've lost are Leicester at home and Newcastle at home 
I think we'll like the fact that you guys are going to come on to us. I think we'll score, but I don't think either team will want to lose this game. So I'm going to go one all. Yeah, well, based on stats, Barnaby and Leicester wouldn't be top of the league. So you never know with football, you never know. You just never know. Anyway, mate, thanks a lot for uh, for joining us. Uh, if you are for some reason watching this and are a Man City fan, don't forget to go over to Blue Moon Rising on YouTube and follow them on Twitter as well. Uh, and obviously, more importantly, if you're a Spurs fan, don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. And uh, good luck, everyone, on Sunday for the big one. Come on, you Spurs. Hello and welcome to part one of another episode of Spurverts. I'm here with Craig and Emma as usual. Now, first up, we are talking about the weekend, the Watford win. 